Hey everyone, welcome back to ICT Kenya. This is episode two of our college computer practical exam series. So if you watched part one on word processing, you're in the right place. If you didn't, make sure you check it out later. Today we are diving into spreadsheet section of the DICT computer application one exams. I'll show you how to create a workbook and worksheet, and, and organize data, rotate column headings, insert columns between others, use useful functions like sum, average, and even if functions to calculate grades, match sales for titles, sort records, create duplicates of worksheets, insert bar chart, and of course, prepare and print your work spreadsheet. So we're going to do this step by step. I promise to make it simple and fun. So open your spreadsheets program, get the practice paper from the link below and let's get started. Here is task two. Figure one is a spreadsheet program. Okay, spreadsheet extracts showing marks attained by students. Use it to answer the questions that follow. So question A, Roman one, open a spreadsheet program and key in the data in sheet one as it appears. Save the workbook as marks in NEC exam folder. So go to start menu, get Excel, then new blank workbook. So to save this, we go to file and then go to save as. And then from there, we're gonna choose our folder. We can't see desktop here, therefore I go to browse. Then I search for desktop here. Then my folder, here is it. And the name of this one should be, as indicated in the question, max. Then from there, I'm gonna click save. And that's how you create a worksheet. So we have answered question one, question A, Roman one, four and a half max. So, we are told, key in the data in sheet one as it appears. I'm going to key in right now. We are not supposed to format the headings. Like the first row, we need to bold all of them. And again, make sure all the values are visible. No one is hidden. So, double click the column boundary. Assignment, you do the same. And for exam, the same. You just double click to make sure that they fit automatically. And then we are done with question one. Question two, Roman two, rotate the column headings by an angle of 45 degrees. To do so, select the column headings, either using the mouse or select A1, and then using shift and left arrow key, you select like that. Then to rotate, it is already here in alignment from home tab. We have alignment here, alignment tab. And here we can do things like we can align top alignment, center alignment, and so on. We can increase the indent or even reduce it. Here is our orientation. We need to make it 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. Uh, so if you click it, it will be aligned to 45 degrees. But suppose it's 45 degrees and the exam was rotated to 60 degrees or another degree, what do you do? You check for more alignment settings and then you just type it here direct to 160 and then you click OK. But in our case, we wanted 45. Then OK. And we'll have answered that question. B Roman 1. Insert a column between column D and E and type the text coursework as its column heading. To do that, we need to click between D and E. So this is the place here, right click column E, and then select insert. A blank column will be inserted here. And the name of this one is coursework, like that. The next question is, use the following instruction to answer the questions that follow. Post work marks is supposed to cut, added to assignment, and then converted to 
that is cuts which is up over 20 and an assignment of 100 that is a total of 120 so for this case it's gonna be 17 plus 70 out of 120 and then we multiply by 40 percent instead of 100 percent then for exam it will be if this exam which is out of 50 converted to 60 percent of final mark that is for example nad will be having that 2 over 50 times 60 percent use the following instruction to answer the questions that follow using a function and cell references only compute both work marks and final mark and like we saw in the previous instruct piece of instruction here it is clear that coursework we are going to is equals to you take this 17 plus 70 percent and you know it is total the total is equals to 120 and then we convert to 40 and you shall see that the first person shall be having 29 and the others we shall be having 20 30 24 and so on now for final exam we've been told that it will be is equals to exam over 50 over 50 then multiplied by 60 and this one will be 38.4 copy to the rest let us confirm whether we are correct here suppose this person got 20 out of 20 and for the assignment the person got 100 out of 100 and then for the exam the person got 50 then it means final mark we shall be having what we shall be having the coursework plus exam and this person shall be having 100 percent so it means our formula is correct let me undo control z control z then let us compute for the final mark is equals to coursework plus exam 67.4 the first person double click and the formula will be applied for the rest of them question d roman one copy the contents of sheet one to sheet two and rename sheet two as grades how do we do copying first check the sheet name here right click and move or copy then move to the end create copy and then k and here is our new copy right click it and rename the copy as grades press enter and we are done with that then the next query is in grades sheet insert a row above row one and mark the cells from the range of a to h1 i think this is because of uh applying a heading a column not column but title so right click column uh, row one then insert this is how you insert a blank row then merge a1 up to h1 merge them like that then type the text module one exam results so this one will be module one exam results you can format it up make making use of the preformatted styles here and tell, talk about heading one And do there's a mistake logo here so go there and then and talk of title like that sort the table ordered by student name in alphabetical order so to sort a table we have to select even the column heading then from there we can go to data tab here at the top then sort then sort by what student name and the instruction is sort by student name in alphabetical order like this one either a to z or z to a 
and then OK. And you'll notice that first student will be uh, Francis, followed by G, H, K, M, S, S, and T, the last person. Then the next question is type the text grade in I2. Here, we type grade. Then after typing the grade, using the final mark, use the if function to grade the students as follows. For 0 to 49, that is F. 50 to 64, that is C. 65 to 79, that is B. And 80 to 100, that is an A. To do this, go to grades. Then type is equals to if. I prefer uppercase for this case. If. Then final mark. If final mark is greater than or equal to 80. This should be, this should be a A. Else, if the same mark is greater than or equal to 65, this one should be a B. Else, if the same is, the same is greater than or equal to 50, this one should be a C. Else, if this mark here is less than 50, this one should be a F. Should be a F. And then we close the bracket with number of ifs. We had one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And you'll notice that. If we double click here, we shall be seeing the grades. We have C's and several B's here. I also, you can also make use of another formula. You can make use of a ifs function, as I've done in one of the videos, as you can see from the screen. You can also make use of another one known as switch statement. But be, so make sure you familiarize yourself with the two functions, that is ifs and switch, but for the sake of this exam, you're supposed to work with if. Next question is, insert an embedded bar chart that compares coursework and final marks for the all students. Type the chart title as comparison. So to insert a bar chart, we need to select the columns in need. We need coursework. We compare coursework with final work. So we select coursework. Then while holding control, select final mark. But because you also need to know the student name, we select the student name. That is while holding control key. Then from there now we can insert. Then we need a bar chart. This is a column or bar chart. Here we need bar chart. You can choose any of these bar charts here. 3D. Yes. And then the chart title should be comparison. Comparison. After that, it is usually advisable to take this chart to another page. But before I do so, let me design it to make it appear more attractive. And check these styles here. There are a lot of styles here to make it more appealing. So, in some exams, you may be told that this chart should be moved to a specific hey, uh, worksheet. To do that, just click the chart, go to move chart, then to a new sheet and name the sheet as maybe chart, and then you click OK, even though this is not required in this exam paper. By clicking that, the chart will go to its own worksheet. Now, since we have already done with that, let us check the last question. Save the changes to print out later each of the following, sheet one and grade sheet. So to print sheet one, all you need to do is to go to file, go to print, and then select your printer here. But before you select your printer, 
check whether all the columns can fit in the same page. If they cannot fit, you can change the orientation to landscape. But in my case, or go to scale it and select fit all columns on one page like this. But in my case, uh, we don't need to apply all of these because all the columns can fit in the same same page. Then from there, now you can choose your printer here. But since this is for demonstration purposes, I will just choose Microsoft Print to PDF. That is converting my worksheet to PDF. Then from there, I print. Then from there, I'm going to save it in my folder as like that. And this one will be converted to PDF. The same applies to the grades. We had this chart in grades. Let me just take it back there. It was here. So we are supposed to go to file, print, then not selected chart, but this is a selected chart. Go to file, print, then active sheets only. Here is it. You can see that mine is spanning to the next page. So to avoid this, I can change the orientation to landscape. And this one becomes four. Why is it four? <clears throat> I only need to play with the chart a bit, a little bit, make it uh, smaller in size. Then again, I go to file and print. And now it fits in the same page. If I set it to landscape, will it fit? Certainly. There will be one column here. And to solve this problem, we just go to no scaling and then we set fit all columns on one page. And all of them will be compressed to one page. Then you print. I'll convert mine to PDF and this is grades. Then save. Then once I'm done, now I can close this. Save changes. After saving changes, I can also close my work. Let me go back to my folder. Here we have the sheet one as a PDF. We also have the grades as a PDF. And that's all. So, and that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Always enjoy hearing from you. Just like the video. It really helps the channel grow and let me know that these lessons are helping you out. In episode 3, we will move to the database section of the DICT Computer Application 1 exam. So make sure you subscribe so that you may not miss it. Goodbye for now.